Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make your own stop motion puppet. The first step in making a puppet is to design your own character. I've decided to base my design on a pumpkin. I decided to make my character into a gardener as you can tell from his outfit. To create the armature you will need aluminium wire, metal epoxy putty and a pair of pliers. The next step is to draw your characters according to the measurements you've decided on. I've also drawn out the armature so that I can measure out the aluminium wire and cut it accordingly. I'll be using 2mm aluminium wire for the body and for the fingers I'll be using 1mm aluminium wire. First I measured the length from the top of the head to the body. Then I folded it in the middle making a loop and twisted it using pliers. Leave the wire untwisted at the end as we'll need to connect it to the arms. For the arms measure the arm length and double it then make a loop on each end and twist. Twisting the wire will allow the puppet to become more durable and sturdy. Connect the first wire you've made to the second one by twisting the ends. We will need to connect the legs, so leave the wires untwisted again. To make the legs, repeat the same steps as you've done for the arms. Using the 1mm aluminium wire, wrap it around the loop and twist it to create the fingers. To reinforce the structure of the armature, we'll be using metal epoxy putty. Metal epoxy putty has two parts that will need to be mixed together. By mixing these two parts together, it will create a chemical reaction which will allow the putty to harden. The metal epoxy putty will take up to 10 minutes to harden. It is important to wear gloves while mixing and applying the putty to the armature, as it can be quite harmful to the skin. I'm applying the putty to the places that I know the puppet won't need to bend. The metal epoxy can be quite difficult to work with, so a lot of time and patience is required. When you've finished applying the putty to your armature, it should look something like this. The next step is making the head. I'll be using tin foil to bulk up the head as I don't want the head to be top heavy. Make sure your puppet is made to scale. You can do so by using your drawing as a reference. Now that you've bulked up the head with tin foil, the next step is to sculpt the head with polymer clay. For this part, you'll need some polymer clay and some modelling tools. Polymer clay can be quite stiff to work with at first, so you'll need to knead it to make it more pliable. I started sculpting in the details of the face once I've made sure that the polymer clay has completely covered the tin foil. I'm also using polymer clay to make the shoes. Intricate details can also be added to the shoes by using the modelling tools. Once you've completed those steps, it is now ready to be baked in the oven. I'll be baking it for 20 minutes. Polymer clay needs to be baked at no more than 130 degrees Celsius. Now that it has been baked, it is now ready to be painted. I'm painting the first layer of dark paint. In the next layer, I'll be painting with a lighter colour to reveal the darker colour underneath. I'm adding different shades of orange to add more realism. The painting process can take a lot of time, but I think it's worth it as it makes the puppet seem more alive. For the next step, you'll need a foam or sponge and a hot glue gun. Foam can be used to create the silhouette of your character. It is a great way of quite literally fleshing out your character. Once I've created the back and front of the body, I sandwiched together using hot glue. As my character is wearing gloves, I'm using foam to create the fingers. Once you've completed this step, you can now make the costume. I'm reusing old clothing and fabric scraps to create a costume. I found that the clothing doesn't have to match perfectly with my original costume design as long as it does look quite similar and it's a great way to be sustainable in your practice. I'm using hot glue to bond the pieces of fabric together as it is quite time efficient and it doesn't interfere with the costume design.
Making the costume is actually one of my favourite parts, as it is the final step in completing the look of the puppet. By painting various parts of the costume, I found that it is very effective in adding shadows and depth and whilst bringing out some details in the costume. As you can see here, I'm doing the final touches on the shadows and highlights on the costume. As we're coming to the end of the making process, it's almost time for me to show you the final look. And here's the final look. I really enjoyed the process of making this puppet. This is definitely one of the best puppets I've made so far, and I'm really happy with how it's turned out.
hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and had lots of fun learning and making your very own stop motion puppet. I can't wait to see your wonderful creations. Until next time, see ya!